Welcome to the hidden camera mirror trick. It's a very simple but impressive form of photography that only requires a simple camera like an iPhone and three photos merged together in Photoshop. The way it works is I take a photo while facing the mirror, one hand on the glass in the first photo, the other hand on the glass in the second photo, and then a third photo making sure that my face is visible. Then we take them into Photoshop and we mess around with the layers until you've got a merged photo so that it appears as if there's no camera in the scene at all. A photo is being taken but you can see both of my hands and no camera which makes it a hidden camera mirror trick. So let's get started with that now. I'm going to bring up my camera here and as I said it does not matter what camera you use, you could do this on your iPhone, you could do it on the top of the, top of the range DSLR, it doesn't make a difference. When I take these photos, I'm going to be very careful not to block out too much of my torso. So for that, I'm going to pull my sleeve up slightly and I'm going to lift my arm up like this. This will allow me to capture my whole torso as well as my left hand against the glass. Then I'll do the same for the other side. This will allow me to get my whole body from my neck and below because I'm going to be, going to be taking this photo with my camera covering my face. Then I will take a third photo and this time I'm going to use it from just below my jawline or my visible neckline here and I'm going to use that to capture my face and we'll merge all three of those photos together. So let's try that now. One thing I recommend here is to line up your camera lens with your nose. That way you know it's central in the photograph and you don't have to worry about having different perspectives between the photos. For this third photo, I'm still trying to keep this camera lens central with my nose so that I know that the photos are all going to align reasonably well and make my editing process easier. I'm also going to stick my neck out a little bit, just going to hide some of the jawline. And that's the three photos captured. Now we're going to go in and we're going to process those photos together. I've loaded the photos into Lightroom, I've given them some very basic edits just the way I want to see them, and then I've selected the images that I want to use. We've got one of my left hand, my right hand, and my face. I'm going to select all, which is Command A or Control A if you're on a Windows computer. Then I'm going to right click, and I'm going to go up to Edit In, and then Open as Layers in Photoshop. That's automatically going to take these images over to Photoshop and stack them on top of each other, which will allow me to do the processing much easier. I don't have to export them first. It's much smoother. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the bottom layer and I'm going to move it to the top. That is going to be the photo of my face and not me with my hands on the mirror. This will allow me to then change the opacity of the top image to 50 and the second image to 50 and I'll be able to arrange the images much easier. So the first thing I'll do is I will remove the visibility from that top image so I'm only seeing my hands on the mirror. And then I'm going to use the move tool to move around the layers until I'm happy with the placement. This way we can try and overlap the face and get the shoulders in the right position. I think lining up on the face, which I actually did a very good job of holding steady here, is going to be the best way to do this. Then I'm going to take that top layer, make it visible, and I'm going to move that into place too over the top of the face. Which is about there. We can experiment with this a little bit further later. And we can also resize if we need to. Now I'm going to remove the visibility of the top layer. I'm going to take the second layer, set the opacity back to 100. And we know that on this layer I can see my left hand. So it's the right side of the image that I want to remove. So what I'm going to do here, now I've set the opacity, is I'm going to select M, which is going to be, allow me to use the rectangular select tool. And I'm going to go to this, the right hand side of the photograph. Make sure you're not set to a fixed ratio here at the top. Right hand side of the photograph. Then I'm going to go to layer, layer mask, and 
hide selection. Now that we've revealed half of that photograph and we can see both hands on the mirror, it's time to experiment with some placement. So when we add this face back in, and what we can do quickly here is we can mask around this face. So I just go all the way around like that. And if I go to layer, layer mask, make sure you're selecting the top layer for this. Let's go to layer, layer mask and reveal selection. Now that I've done this, we can see that, okay, I really only want my face in this layer. I don't want any of the background because the perspective has changed. I had to move my camera down for this. So with that in mind, when I cut my face out, I need to ensure that there's not going to be any of the face underneath that's poking out around it. So at the moment, I would say that my face is perhaps a little bit narrow. So for this, I may even transform the image slightly. I did Command T there or Control T, it's a transform tool. And I'm gonna lock the aspect ratio. And I'm gonna make it just slightly bigger. That looks maybe too big. Let's leave it about there. I'm gonna double click that to fix the transform. Then I'm gonna go back to the opacity. And it's really just a case of moving this around until you're happy with the results. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to line up the neck and the shoulder line here so that when I remove parts of the background, nothing from underneath is going to sneak through. And I think that looks pretty good. We can also move the bottom layers around a little bit. That looks very accurate now. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to zoom in. First of all, let's remove that top layer just so we can see how that alignment looks. I'm gonna zoom in. And I'm not changing the opacity yet, but I'm gonna go back to this top layer. I'm selecting the layer mask and I'm gonna to go to the brush tool by pressing B. The brush tool will allow me to remove or add parts of that top layer back in. So because I'm using white at the moment, it's going to add parts of that layer back in. Here, if I show you over here, I'm adding to parts of that top layer back in. If I switch the color palette from white to black, which you can do using X on your keyboard, it's going to remove parts of that top layer. And that's where we can start to see how this is all going to come together. So I'm just going to clean up the edges of the photo before I go any further. And I'm using a reasonably hard brush here, around 75, maybe 80. It means that it's not going to be a hard line all the way around my face because that can look a little bit too sharp. Instead of using a pretty hard line, it will allow me to remove parts of the top layer without having that sharpness. So now that I've done the, the first sort of overview of this top layer, and let's remove my camera here as well. Well, now it's time to switch that opacity back to 100 because right now it's really hard to see which layer is which. So let's set this back to 100. And I'm gonna go back through again and just do those finer details around the edges. So for example, right here, oh, I'm using the wrong one. I need to go onto the layer mask and not the actual layer. And I can remove this. I'm gonna switch back to white because I see a little bit of skin poking through here. And then by using my brush, I'm just gonna go around all the edges and the layers until I'm happy that I have an overlap that looks pretty good. It's going to require a good amount of experimentation and don't be sh too strict about what it should look like. So there will be some minor errors here, that's natural. We're not using a tripod, we're just using me with a camera. I mean, there are other ways to do this. You can do that and that with a tripod and a camera here and then remove that artificially later. But that's a much more complicated process. You have to be very, very good at replacing parts of a scene in Photoshop with something completely brand new. So this process does have a few little intricacies. 
but we don't have to get too strict on ourselves. You can change the size of the brush by using the bracket key to make it smaller or larger. That allows you to get into some more intricate areas like around the ear. In the hair here. We do have this chandelier to contend with, but we're going to come to that last. It's not going to be as difficult as it seems. You can see why you might want a clean background when you're doing this. zoom out and see what that looks like. So already that looks pretty decent. Uh, we just have some issues at the top of the photograph and we also need to smooth out this shirt slightly. Let's work on the shirt now. So to do the shirt, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this middle layer and I'm gonna go to this layer mask and I'm gonna take a brush again. I'm gonna make it quite big, around, maybe, yeah, about 100, 110 is fine. And instead of using black, I'm gonna use about 50% gray. This is going to allow us to merge between the photos. It's not completely moving or completely re-adding back in, but it will make it hard to see where this merge point is. Now we've got two microphones on us here. I don't think we need either of them in my opinion, so I'm gonna go back and remove those. Maybe we'll just keep one actually. And because I've used a grey brush, you can see that it actually starts to look pretty decent on the shirt. It just looks like another wrinkle. There are some areas where I've gone too far that you need to correct, and that's fine. Just make sure you do those. Get a little bit close to your screen, zoom in a little bit if you have to, and just start to see where these appear. Let's have a look at the top of this photo now. So the chandelier is above my head. It doesn't look very good, so let's try and salvage it. I'm going to go to the top layer where my face is and select the layer mask and then I'm going to go and I'm going to remove that bottom layer so you can see where we're going to crop this image. And I just want to have the top of this chandelier coming down into the image. You can see it doesn't blend that well but we can fix that in a moment and there's also some issues around the side here with it coming out of nowhere but I think that's the sort of thing you can get away with or we can correct it a little bit with some uh, clone tools, which we probably will do. We can see where we're going to crop this image, which is going to be the top of this chandelier line where the arch meets it. But we have a little bit of an issue where it doesn't blend very well into the background. So I've used the white brush here. I'm going to switch it black back to black and I'm going to bring the opacity down to about 50%. This will allow me to just give it a little bit of a smoother blend. And I'm also gonna go for a really, really soft brush. And let's make it a little bit bigger too. And you can go back and forth with this if you don't like how it looks. So obviously I've gone too far here. I'm gonna use a really soft brush by going from the hardness down to zero, the opacity set to 50. And now you can kind of just paint around and it's going to blend in much easier. We'll do the same on the other side. See, I've gone a little bit too far there, so I'm going to switch it back and remove it again. Break the, make the brush a little bit harder now. And that is looking pretty good. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back 
and we're going to crop this image now. So I've gone back to the rectangular marquee tool and I'm going to go to the fixed ratio crop and I'm going to set it to three width and two height, which is a typical 35 millimeter full frame camera kind of ratio. Then I'm going to crop this image by using the marquee tool and get the composition just how I like it. And then I'm going to go image and crop. And here we're almost there. There's just a couple little bits that I might want to clean up here. And that is going to involve just a little bit of what you might traditionally associate with Photoshop. So now that I'm happy with how these layers look, I'm going to go and I'm going to right click and I'm going to go merge visible. And that's going to make all of the layers into one. And I'm going to go to the clone stamp tool here. You can right click this to so the clone stamp or pattern stamp. We're going to use clone stamp, make this brush a little bit bigger. If you hold down the option or the alt key, you'll be able to select an area you want to sample from. And then just go through and remove any of these bits of lamps, whatever's in your background that you're not too happy with. So that's that moved over there. Ooh. And like I said before, it doesn't need to be perfect. The result is in the effects and not the actual perfection. So I think just by removing those little bits and zooming back out, I think that looks pretty good. It's a simple, effective result. Some things may be a little bit wrong. So my body might be a little bit slim. My face might be a little bit big. But really, the only thing people are going to notice when they look at this is that where is the camera? The camera is missing from this photograph. When I first shot this photograph, and I wrote a blog post about this, this must have been four, maybe five years ago. Uh, someone from the Daily Mail in the UK here, um, they found my article and then they rewrote about it on their website. And I was on the homepage of the Daily Mail for a trick photography effect like this. The thing is, it's quite tricky, so not many people have done it since. But I've just shown you my exact process so you can go away and try it for yourself. It's not that difficult and the results are very impressive. So that is how to process your photos when it comes to the hidden camera mirror trick. Thanks for watching.